Hello everyone, this is Nick Perry with your chart slideshow for Thursday, July 27th. Today, I want to discuss volatility. In the blog recently, I asked readers to suggest topics uh, for discussion, and one of the ones that came up was volatility. Uh, this is a tough one for me because I never seem to be happy with it, um, because it's, it's a concept that seems overwhelming, uh, but once you get your arms around it, it's pretty basic. So anything I write or discuss on it tends to be either viewed as too basic or too complex. Uh, so I thought I would start with just the basics, um, you know, sort of an overall primer, and try to get everybody on the same page, and then perhaps discuss more advanced topics. So for today, I'm simply going to do a nutshell version of this, just cover the basics, ignore some of the math, uh, ignore some of the, the implications and applications of volatility, and just sort of describe what it is. Generally, when you're talking about volatility, you're talking about one of two types, historical volatility and implied volatility. Uh, if you're in the market uh, for options, you're definitely going to hear implied volatility. If you flip on the television and they're talking about volatility in the market itself, odds are they are discussing historical volatility. The two are somewhat related and they do tend to move with each other, but there are some differences. But first, I want to discuss historical volatility. In its most basic form, you can think of historical volatility as backward looking. Uh, it's a calculation that looks over the price action that we've seen over the, a given number of days and then uses a calculation to calculate the volatility. Um, it gives you nothing more of what has happened. It's not necessarily a prediction of what will happen, it's just simply over the last month or whatever time frame you're talking about this has been the volatility. In contrast to that, implied volatility is forward-looking. The math on this gets a little bit more complicated and generally because you're talking about options here, uh, but what you're doing is you're acknowledging what historical volatility has been, but you're looking at options and you're basically saying given what's coming down the road as far as future events, what what do we anticipate the volatility is going to be? So in other words, it's an expectation of future volatility. It's an assumption influenced by upcoming events. Uh, for an example of upcoming events, think of earnings. That's where you'll see implied volatilities rise, even though the stocks may not be doing much. Uh, for an example of this, let's turn to Google. As I'm sure everyone's already well aware, Google recently reported earnings. Uh, this green arrow here highlights where, uh, where Google stood after the report. So in other words, Google uh, had rallied through June, peaked earlier this month, turned around and headed lower uh, into the earnings report. Overall, the, the next day's reaction wasn't too far out of line. Other than if I had put the arrow in, you'd have a tough time seeing it. There wasn't much of a gap. Um, you didn't see a huge run the next day. Uh, we saw a dip, but it reversed and the stock closed higher. So all in all, it was a fairly tame reaction uh, given Google's history. But now let's look at the volatility picture. This chart from myvolatility.com uh, is a good one because it shows historical volatility plotted alongside implied volatility. Uh, this blue line here represents historical volatility while this uh, yellowish line here is implied volatility. And you can see that heading you know, through May and June, uh, both had been sort of trending down, um, not, not a whole lot, nothing too significant. Uh, in July, all of a sudden, his earnings started to near, uh, implied volatility ticked higher and spiked right into the earnings report, while historical volatility uh, was pretty much flat. The reason that I, I picked Google for this example was because it was a good illustration of how implied volatility may be forward-looking and expect volatility, but it's not always an assumption that comes true. Basically, Google came out the next day, was lower, was up, uh, traded around a little bit, but didn't have an extraordinarily large range that day. And you can see what happened to the implieds. Uh, they spiked higher right before the report. Is basically market makers and traders 
don't want to sell these options too cheaply uh, because there is the potential that the stock can move drastically, especially on a gap situation. When that doesn't happen, you see the implieds implode and move back in line with historicals. So, wrapping up the discussion, you've got two different measures. Generally, when you hear volatility being talked about, they're referring to historical volatility. Uh, if you're hearing them talk about the market, talking about it in general. If they're talking about options, uh, odds are you're being uh, you're talking about implied volatility. Uh, they tend to move together. The correlation tends to be high uh, when you look at them over a longer period. But in shorter term situations, like around earnings or upcoming events, you will see implied volatilities diverge drastically sometimes from historical volatility, as especially with uncertainty. The more uncertainty there is, the more potential for a gap. So therefore, the more that option sellers are going to demand uh, to get out of these options before they'll sell them. So that got, that wraps up uh, this discussion. As I said, there, it, it can get a lot more complex, uh, but I'm not sure that, that that complexity is needed to understand the basics.